Now, after uh, the Mendel laws uh, became known, and I understand that, that Mendel laws were also discovered independently in Japan, which I learned from uh, Dr. Gota Morota, he had that statement in his thesis, and, and then I double-checked and it was right, I, Kan Kanemaro, right? That was, yes. And um, so, using Mendelian laws, there were three persons that actually set the foundations of modern quantitative and population genetics. Uh, Professor Sual Wright, Professor Ronald Fisher, Wright from the United States, Fisher from uh, the United Kingdom, and Professor John Haldane from the United Kingdom as well. Sewell Wright uh, was uh, interested in agriculture at the early stage of his career, but then he moved into evolutionary biology. He did most of his career at the University of Chicago, and when he was 65 years of age, he was invited by Professor Crow to move to the University of Wisconsin. So he was a retired man, an old man, and during his retirement, he wrote a four-volume book. And he actually died at 98 years of age, and he was still reasonably well, except that he was blind, but he skidded in the ice, he slipped in the ice, he fractured his pelvis and died in the hospital. So Wright made many contributions, notoriously the concept of the inbreeding coefficient, and also an important uh, result from a population genetic theory was the equilibrium distribution of allelic frequencies under a pure neutral and random fluctuation model. Fisher, uh, he was uh, trained in mathematics in Cambridge, but very interested in genetics. He set the statistical foundations of quantitative genetics, writing a paper in 1918 when he was 20, 21 years old. That paper was rejected. And in that paper also he introduced the analysis of variance. And later on, in uh, 1922, he wrote a paper on the theoretical foundations of statistics and introduced a method known as maximum likelihood. And Haldane was a mathematical geneticist, actually has a paper in 1948, which I think is the first time that the notion of Bayesian methods is used in genetics. And he was using Bayesian methods to estimate the probability of a mutant in a population. Now, Haldane, Wright was a very humble and gentle person. Uh, Fisher was the contrary. He was uh, very rude, uh, very arrogant. Uh, and Haldane was perhaps the most interesting of the three. Uh, he was a political activist, so here he's not lecturing in genetics, he was lecturing in London uh, to tell the workers to join the revolution against the oligarchy and the bourgeois class, because uh, Haldane was a Marxist. He actually resigned his British citizenship, he moved to India, he became an, an Indian citizen, but later on in his life he, he returned to Britain. So in essence, these three people set the foundations. But we needed somebody in agriculture to put all this together in the context of animals or plants. And the person that did that was uh, Dr. J. Lawrence Lash. Uh, and he's uh, very famous because he developed perhaps the first textbook on scientific animal breeding. It was published in 1945 by Iowa State University Press, and he founded the famous uh, Iowa School of Animal Breeding, and last probably is the professor that has the largest number of PhD students trained under him. I think he trained close to 140, 145 students. And in some sense, we are all academic great-grandchildren of Lush. My PhD supervisor, Professor Chapman, was actually the first PhD student of Chapman. So I'm a grandchild, and you are a great grandchild of, uh, of Lash. Now, Lash, I have to say, he did his PhD at the University of Wisconsin. He, uh, he got his PhD in 1922, actually working in semen sex ratios, uh, but then uh, he was in Texas for a while and then moved to Iowa and he made all these contributions. So he was able to get ideas from Wright, mostly from Wright, also from Fisher and from Haldane, and integrated them in the context of animal production and created the modern size of animal breeding. So here's a photo of, of Fisher, 
which is 1918 paper. He was very young at that time. He was an undergraduate at Cambridge University when he wrote that paper. Okay, um, an important concept in agriculture uh, is that uh, we normally select animals and plants by considering many attributes simultaneously. So today we do what are called multivariate analysis. And a central concept in multivariate analysis is that of the association between traits measured by the coefficient of correlation. So suppose that uh, Y1 and Y2 are measurements on two traits in animals. For example, milk production in a cow and protein composition in the milk. So this correlation may be due to either genetic associations, uh, factors that control commonly both traits, and as well as environmental associations. And what uh, Hazel, and also an Australian in 1936, actually a few years earlier, developed the concept of the phenotypic correlation, and this equation gives a representation of how the genetic causes and the environmental causes add up to each other, and this h square x and h square y are the correlation of these two traits. So that, that was an important paper that set the foundations of a <coughs> multivariate analysis. And this is the same thing that was done in Australia by Fairfield Smith in 1936. Even though it was a plant breeding, it was publishing the famous or infamous Annals of Eugenics. And he used uh, a notion from uh, Professor Fisher, and he called that discriminant function, but actually what he was doing is something that today we call best linear prediction, which was uh, formalized in some sense for, for Henderson. So these were important precursors of multiple trait analysis, which is something that we all do in animal and plant breeding. Okay, now in the left, and I hope that this slide will not move. Uh, we have a photo of Professor Fisher, when he was, of course, much older, uh, teaching a course at Iowa State University. And this is Professor Oscar Kempthorne, also uh, from Great Britain, but he did his academic career in the Statistics Department at Iowa State. I met personally Professor Kempthorne, but not Professor Fisher. And in the right, we have Professor Charles Henderson, who was here in Kyoto, in 1984, invited by Dr. Sasaki. So what, what Henderson did was he actually generalized uh, Fisher's uh, ideas in the paper and made them vectorial as opposed to scalar. So Fisher's mean became a mean vector, Fisher's IT variance became a covariant matrix, and then he did many different things. He developed an algorithm to uh, estimate the breeding value from millions and millions of animals at the same time. Uh, he extended this method to a cross-sectional, longitudinal, and actually multivariate data. And then he also uh, gave a formula for how to estimate the prediction of, an, of the breeding value of an individual that still does not exist, but it has relatives. So from the relatives, we could predict the breeding value of a cow that still is yet to be born. So uh, at that time, uh, we didn't know anything about markers, no genes. We didn't talk about minimum allelic frequencies, uh, minor allelic frequencies. We didn't talk about linkage equilibrium. Nobody was too interested in causal variance because in agriculture, we felt that the causal variance of large effects would be fixed by selection, which happened to be the case. And nobody was interested in publishing nature genetics or national list or getting a national list of health grants. It was a completely unglamorous thing, but yet, sorry, I have to go back. Uh, these things made tremendous contributions to the genetic improvement in production of milk, meat, fiber, energy, and resistance to diseases without any knowledge whatsoever of the molecular basis. Uh, Professor Henderson was originally from Iowa. He studied uh, in in, uh, in Iowa State under Professor Hazel. He uh, wrote his PhD thesis in 1948, and he's one of the very few persons that I met that was able to work on his PhD thesis throughout his life, because he was on linear models, and when he died, he was still working in, in linear models. 
So uh, Henderson um, was instrumental. Today we talk about the N uh, smaller than P problem. What is this? N is sample sizes, and P <coughs> is the number of variants uh, that continues growing and growing and growing due to the explosive developments in molecular genetics and in the post-genomics revolution. So we fit statistical models with many, 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 many more variants and observations. And to do that, you require specific methods. And I'm not going to get into the details, but an important one called, is called the best linear bias predictor, which is used in almost all species of animals for all sorts of productions to do routine genetic evaluation of animals, and Japan is is not the exception. Japan also uses blood to the best of my knowledge. And this method was then found to uh, have many different interpretations, including Bayesian interpretations, penalized maximal actual interpretations, spatial statistics interpretation, in even machine learning interpretations. So according to a very famous statistician from Columbia University, uh, BLAP is a bit like the whole Roman, Holy Roman Empire. It was everywhere in, in the world. And Henderson was the one that started this, and it's important to remember that was the case. It's a method that originally came from animal breeding, and it postulates that in addition to the standard types of regression coefficients. We have randomly varying coefficients because they vary according to a distribution and that produces a phenomenon called shrinkage, but that's a topic to be discussed in a course and not in a lecture because it's highly specialized. Um, this is Professor Henderson teaching, this uh, was in 1987, teaching a course on advances in variance component estimation and the person to the right was a younger version of the person that is speaking to you. That's me. And I, I had the honor of um, uh, teaching the course together with Professor Henderson. Um, there was um, a Japanese student that was uh, studying at Iowa State, which is about seven hours away from Champaign-Urbana, uh, Takahashi. And uh, Mr. Takahashi would drive every Wednesdays from Iowa to Champaign-Urbana. He would take the course and then drive back. So maybe only Japanese people are able to do that. But uh, so this is a, a recollection that I have. The photo is imperfect. I have a better one, but I had forgotten to, uh, to put it in the, in the presentation and then uh, Gota reminded me, and I downloaded from Wikipedia. I, I, I copied from Wikipedia, so the resolution is not very good. Uh, on a personal note, I have to say that uh, uh, I was one year a student with Henderson at Cornell in 1973. That year, he was not teaching his course, and even if he had taught that course, I was not ready for it, because it was a very, very difficult course. I actually took that course when I was an assistant professor at the University of Illinois in 1978. It was one of the first courses that I took as a student, but being a professor. Um, in animal breeding, we use data that come from a process uh, of selection. And Henderson had a very important paper published in 1975 on how to do best linear bias prediction under a selection model. Because uh, Henderson was, uh, could not be questioned at that time, most people never questioned Henderson's paper. But actually, that paper was a bit misleading in some respects. So uh, uh, in 1976, there was a very important paper in statistics on how to do inference from missing data. So uh, two colleagues of mine, Sotan Im, originally from Cambodia, but he became a French citizen. He had a PhD in statistics in France. And my former student, Rohan Fernando, is a professor at Iowa State. We adapted this missing data idea and retook the selection problem uh, from a uh, missing data perspective. And I think at, uh, until these two papers and some comments that were made by uh, Professor Robin Thompson from Edinburgh in 1979, most people uh, did not find uh, issues 
with Hennessy on paper, they accepted it as a sacrosanct matter, but now uh, there are some, some issues that, uh, that some suggestions made that paper that probably were not the best ones, uh, but it was an important contribution.